Welcome everybody with a new episode of Outrun TV and I have today with me Kanza Vina and Ryan Korbari from Indonesia, Jakarta. Hello Kanza, hello Ryan. May I ask you to introduce yourselves? Sure. Kanza. Perkenalan, aku Kanza Vina dari Indonesia dan sekarang aku bekerja di Sanggar Suara, sebuah organisasi kawan-kawan transgender perempuan di Jakarta. Okay. Her name is Kanza Vina. She's from Indonesia and she she now working with uh, Sanggar Suara, a transgender uh, organizations that that works in Jakarta. And I'm Ryan. I'm uh, I'm also from Indonesia and I'm works for Ars Pelangi as a chairperson. Great. Thank you so much both for making the time to talking to, to us at Outright TV and with us, like the audience that is, that is going to watch this, uh, this episode. Uh, of course, we're all very, very worried about what's happening with the Corona COVID-19 crisis. And although we don't hear a lot about what's, what's happening in Indonesia, um, I really am glad to have this opportunity to speak to, to, to you to hear more about how the Corona COVID-19 crisis is impacting your communities, your lives and, and the lives of many, many more in, in Jakarta and Indonesia. So may I just ask you, like, what is going on? Because we hardly hear anything. Okay, bagaimana kondisi dan situasi di Indonesia saat ini? Gimana dampaknya uh, buat komunitas? Iya, uh, yang pertama adalah seperti yang kita ketahui beberapa waktu yang lalu pemerintah sudah mengeluarkan instruksi untuk uh, bekerja dari rumah dan juga melakukan fisikal distancing. Selain itu juga kemarin sudah diberlakukan untuk melakukan uh, PSBB yaitu uh, pembatasan sosial berskala besar dan tentu ini berdampak kepada teman-teman komunitas LGBTIQ uh, semua ya karena pertama untuk teman-teman yang berada di Jakarta yang menjadi epicentrum pusat penyebaran uh, COVID terbesar di Indonesia Baby, you wanna translate? Okay, so a couple of days ago, the government start to uh, inter, uh, in, not introduce, to suggest the, the the society to do work from homes and uh, initiating what they call it a, 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 a social barrier, high scale social barrier. It's, it's, it seems like it's it's look like a lockdown situations. So yeah, we cannot actually go, go outside the house now so it's it's very impactful for the community because yeah most of the community works uh, especially transgender women works in the street as a sex worker as a street singers and they can't work anymore because nobody is in, in the streets and the the finance is getting real quite low because of that so yeah that's quite impactful. Hmm. Ya, yeah. uh, uh, apa namanya uh, sejauh ini yang sudah kita lakukan mengingat uh, apa namanya memang situasinya memang sangat urgent adalah kita melakukan survei cepat. Memang yang pertama dilakukan untuk komunitas teman-teman transgender yang ada di Jakarta waktu itu hampir dua minggu yang lalu kita lakukan adalah melakukan uh, apa namanya survei cepat terkait berapa jumlah teman-teman transgender yang memang um, terdampak dalam situasi ini dari hasil survei cepat kita itu hampir ada 640 teman-teman transgender perempuan di Jabodetabek yang memang kehilangan pekerjaannya mereka lalu yang kedua adalah tidak mendapatkan penghasilan dan juga kesulitan untuk memenuhi kebutuhan dasar seperti pangan dan alat kebersihan yang lainnya sehingga yang kita lakukan sekarang adalah uh, uh, pasca itu juga kita melakukan penggalangan dana skala uh, nasional dan juga dukungan dari kelompok kawan-kawan jaringan yang ada di internasional sehingga kita bisa mengumpulkan kurang lebih uh, hampir 100 uh, juta rupiah dan juga ada beberapa sumbangan dalam bentuk uang, mata uang asing ada sekitar 1000 euro dan uh, kurang lebih 400 dolar uh, USD yang bisa kita distribusikan untuk teman-teman komunitas sejauh ini untuk Jabodetabek sudah hampir 700 teman-teman yang sudah kita distribusikan Selebihnya ada di wilayah lain seperti Aceh dan nanti juga akan menyusul teman-teman di uh, beberapa wilayah yang ada di Indonesia. Okay, so uh, to react to that situations, we did 
rapid assessment to assess uh, how this COVID-19 affected the community, especially transgender perempuan who are the most vulnerable groups in the LGBT communities in Indonesia. So after the rapid assessment, we found that there is a 640 transgender women lost their jobs and then uh, doesn't have any income because of the because of the government instructions and then and from work from homes uh, it's only in it's it's just only in jakarta area 640 and then we decided to have a fundraising to conduct a fundraising to gather money to help them with their basic needs uh, of food uh, sanitary pads and something like that and then we collect uh, for uh, a week, berapa minggu kan kita seribu euro itu for for uh, two satu minggu for for one years we collect one hundred euros and four hundred US dollars mm -hmm. uh, for that. But uh, is the the situation is growing up, so the transgender community from other area in Indonesia also need that situations like Aceh, uh, Jogja, Makassar, and uh, the Eastern of Indonesia. So we decided to expand the uh, the fundraising to, to help them also. Hmm. Like it, it, is the government providing any support for the communities in, in any way uh, or other organizations? Pemerintah uh, apa ngasih bantuan enggak? Siapa pemerintah? Uh -uh. Sampai sejauh ini uh, hasil uh, diskusi dari lapangan, uh, sampai sejauh ini yang saya ketahui belum ada teman-teman yang mengakses bantuan dari uh, belum mendapatkan bantuan dari pemerintah karena memang uh, untuknya konteks untuk wilayah DKI Jakarta memang harus menggunakan by name by address, uh, dan hampir banyak kebanyakan teman-teman tidak punya kartu identitas dan itu mungkin yang bisa menyulitkan teman-teman untuk mengakses uh, bantuan dari pemerintah. Namun dari beberapa uh, lembaga lain, lembaga-lembaga uh, organisasi masyarakat sipil juga melakukan hal yang sama dan uh, apa namanya sudah mendistribusikan juga bantuan untuk teman-teman komunitas uh, LGBTIQ khususnya teman-teman transgender perempuan. Actually, the government uh, have some support. It's called the direct money support that that have a different uh, different requirement in every uh, cities in Indonesia, but from our assessment, uh, there is no single transgender person who access that support from the government because uh, uh, most of transgender women in Indonesia doesn't have an ID card because that's one of the main requirements to get that uh, support from the government. And then, yeah, most of transgender women doesn't have an ID card, so they cannot access that. Hmm. Yeah, so, so if to, to summarize, the government is can provide some support, but doesn't take into account through the restrictions that they're putting in now that no one can go to work, that like transgender women cannot access that support because there's no ID cards or other uh, identification to access those, those support mechanisms. Exactly. The requirement is quite different in every city, and it's sometimes it's ridiculous. One of the cities have a requirement. Uh, one have one of the cities has requirement that is is a uh, the support is from for Muslims only something something like that that's ridiculous but the main requirement is ID card and addresses ya kan Zat? Yeah. Syarat yeah. utamanya memang KTP dan alamat ya. Yeah, by name by address. By, by name ID. by address. Yeah, that's the main requirement. So that adds yeah. to to more havoc and problems for the transgender. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So, so Kanza, if I may ask, since since you were cut off from the community so suddenly and so abrupt uh, when the government imposed all these restrictions, how do you keep contact with the community? How do you maintain an eye on how people are doing? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Ah, selama pembatasan ini, gimana kamu berkomunikasi dengan teman-teman yang lain? Gimana kamu keep contact dengan mereka? 
Ya, uh, kami memang punya uh, vokal poin vokal poin yang ada di beberapa titik wilayah melalui vokal poin itu kita mengupdate uh, informasi kita punya WhatsApp grup di situ teman-teman bisa uh, apa namanya menceritakan kondisi mereka lalu uh, aku menyampaikan situasi ini ke teman-teman uh, koalisi CRM untuk uh, apa yang bisa kita bantu untuk teman-teman sejauh ini uh, memang akhirnya kita mobile tapi ada beberapa teman-teman juga yang akhirnya harus kita bantu untuk mendistribusikan bantuannya karena memang Uh, ada yang tidak punya rekening bank, lalu juga ada yang memang uh, khususnya teman-teman waria yang lansia itu memang kita harus belanjakan uh, kebutuhan mereka lalu kita langsung distribusikan langsung. Tapi sampai sejauh ini sih aman karena uh, mereka masih bisa menyimpan handphone mereka belum digadaikan, meskipun sebagian sudah ada karena untuk bertahan hidup. Tapi isunya yang naik sekarang adalah selain kesehatan uh, fisik juga kesehatan mental teman-teman juga mulai uh, ganggu dan juga adalah Mereka mulai punya kepanikan tersendiri terkait uh, sewa kosan yang belum bisa mereka bayarkan karena memang mereka tidak punya pemasukan selama pandemi ini. Oke, okay. so sangat suara actually has a focal point in every districts and every in 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 Jakarta area. So they have a WhatsApp groups and they communicate there and then have a coordinations to to which uh, districts who. Ha, who needs the the support uh, and then they coordinate in there and they and Kanza uh, Kanza uh, collaborate that and uh, told that to the CRM and then we decided to distribute that. So we also have a quite problems about distributions because of the barriers and the situation. So yeah, most of this. Most of the distribution we going directly because of we cannot do anything, and there is uh, uh, certain of transgender people who don't don't have a uh, bank account or something, so we have to go directly, and we manage to have you know uh, a team to distribute the 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 money and the uh, food, something like that, mm-hmm. and that but but we face. Also problems uh, that maybe we we have we are held in in terms of physical we we are physically held, but the mental health issue is going to be appear now. So we have we quite uh, we quite we quite have that problems now because of that, and then yeah, and then now we also have a problems that renting uh, rent. Rent housing, uh, fi- house housing money is also become a problems now, and it's quite big. And because of they don't have a income right now, mm-hmm. and yeah, we're still thinking about how can we help them in terms of that. And I'm sure it will takes a lot of money. Oh, and I can imagine, and I think uh, personally that we only starting to see the issues. Because of all these restrictions and confinements and rulings and things that governments put in place to stop the pandemic, um, so I, I think you're absolutely right. And I'm I'm happy to hear that Sangarswara has at least a strong coordination mechanism in place in Jakarta to keep an eye on community on community members. Um, we also read about the horrible thing that happened to one of your community members in North Jakarta, Mira. Um, Do you see that that there is an increase of violence against um, transgender women in in this case in, because of of this crisis and confinement? Uh, is there a link? Like it's so sad to to read what happened to to Mira. Uh, maybe you can tell a little bit about that. Jadi dia dengar tentang kasus Mira, terus dia bertanya apakah kita ada hubungannya antara situasi ini dengan apakah kekerasan menjadi semakin meningkat dengan dengan situasi ini gitu. Nah, sulit masukku uh, dalam konteks kasusnya Mira uh, sulit kita melihat apakah ini memang uh, karena faktor uh, pandemi ini atau enggak karena memang sebelumnya kan uh, bagaimana penerimaan masyarakat juga pemerintah terhadap orang-orang uh, transgender juga kita tahu masih banyak stigma dan diskriminasi yang memang berujung pada kekerasan akhirnya dan uh, kasus Mira ini mungkin uh, kejadiannya bertepatan dengan pandemi ini tapi aku tidak melihat ada apa korelasi antara pandemi ini dengan situasi teman-teman transgender perempuan yang ada di wilayah uh, Jakarta. Tapi uh, kasus uh, Mira ini uh, sampai sejauh ini pure memang uh, mereka uh, karena 
uh, kriminal karena pembunuhan yang dilakukan oleh sekelompok orang yang tidak bertanggung jawab itu. As I said that uh, it's too early for us to connect the dot between the situations and the pandemics, but but uh, for the information that uh, the discriminations and the violence against uh, LGBT people in Indonesia is uh, it's going to be escalated since 2016. So yeah, it's 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 still there. The the situation is still there, and the violence is still still there also so yeah it's a it's in in, in uh, for example in mira cases it's murni it's more it's 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 a pure criminal we we still found that it's pure criminal it's not there is uh, there is we we cannot find the connectings between the situations and the uh, violence yet so but but yeah the violence is still there and just getting raised yeah. mm. Tapi mungkin yang bisa kita lihat bagaimana sebenarnya kasus Mira ini berkaca pada uh, bagaimana orang-orang memperlakukan uh, kelompok-kelompok transgender yang dianggap layak untuk dibunuh, yang dianggap layak untuk di apa namanya mendapatkan kekerasan, bahkan uh, dituduh meskipun tidak ada barang bukti sehingga orang bisa berlaku seperti uh, segampang itu untuk menghilangkan nyawa orang lain. Hmm. Itu sih untuk melihat bahwa memang ini ada korelasinya dengan transphobic dengan kebencian pada orang-orang trans. Yeah, uh, Kansa said that that uh, Mira cases is one of the example that uh, there is a lot of transphobia in Indonesia. So because of the government start to uh, start to have a hate speech and trying to criminalize LGBT people, it's become a legitimation to the society to doing some uh, doing a violence to LGBT people, and that's the example how easy people to attack transgender women to to murder them yeah so to, just to summarize like in in the climate of transphobia of violence against trans women and now with the restrictions being put on by the government on on curbing the corona covid crisis which means that many transgender women have no access anymore to income because they can't do their jobs uh, whether it's street finger or sex work or anything else your community, the communities of transgender women in, in Jakarta, but wider in Indonesia, suffer from immediate and urgent needs, which is access to food, access to housing, access to all kinds of, of sanitary pads and, and, and uh, things for personal dignity and personal care. Um, I hope I summarized that really well, um, but please correct me if, if there's anything I'm missing. And seeing that picture, what would you say uh, and feel would be the best way to support your community and support you at this moment. Jadi gimana? Apa yang bisa efektif dilakukan untuk membantu? Ya sampai sejauh ini sih uh, ada uh, yang sampai sejauh ini yang mungkin uh, kita perlu melakukan asas manulang yang seperti yang direncanakan sama teman-teman cara M terkait dengan uh, mungkin kita harus butuh tools yang lebih dalam lagi melihat uh, kebutuhan teman-teman karena memang situasinya menjadi lebih uh, urgent tidak hanya bagi kelompok uh, transgender perempuan aja tapi untuk uh, komunitas LGBTIQ yang ada di Indonesia terus uh, terkait dengan uh, kebutuhan teman-teman juga ini menjadi sulit karena uh, physical distancing dan apa namanya bekerja dari rumah itu memang uh, tidak bisa berlaku efektif untuk semua orang, khususnya untuk teman-teman transgender, karena misalkan terkait dengan uh, sanitasi dan kebersihan untuk teman-teman uh, kelompok teman uh, untuk orang-orang yang uh, untuk mencegah corona, tapi banyak orang-orang transgender yang tinggal di bawah kolong jembatan, yang ditinggal dalam rumah yang padat penduduk, yang ruangannya hanya satu kali dua meter untuk dua sampai tiga orang yang tinggal di sana. Jadi memang uh, yang bisa kita lakukan sekarang adalah memang untuk memastikan mendistribusikan kebutuhan teman-teman seperti kebutuhan pokok, sewa kosan teman-teman, juga akses kebutuhan kesehatan yang lainnya seperti teman-teman yang ODA, teman-teman yang butuh mengakses ARP itu juga mulai kita uh, pikirkan gitu sih. Oke, okay, so in terms of that we need I think we need a further assessment to find that the uh, the, the effectivity of the support and we have a plan to 
doing a further assessment because we works on advocacy and this mm. is disaster and we're not a humanitarian person's issue so it's mm. we 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 are a little bit you know uh, we are not ready for this so yeah we still managed to to building a, a effective tools to further assessment to make this kind of fundraising become very effective because mm. yeah we 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 saw that there is a couple of problems like uh, the the needs of the sanitary uh, package is quite important because the cleanliness is quite important in the situations mm -hmm. but the transgender people most of the transgender people live in the streets living in the the uh, very slum area and it's quite hard for them to accessing the sanitary package mm -hmm. and become quite clean and then yeah so all um, so what can uh, help them is like uh, raising a man raising a fundraising to help mm -hmm. them in terms of that and we managed to have a effective tools to make that effective yeah no, absolutely and, and i applaud you and congratulate you for taking the initiative for at least trying to to support the community with their urgent uh, needs and immediate needs that that are happening um, from our right yes. side, we, as you might might have might have seen, we have established as well an emergency fundraising for communities all around the globe, and I, I really hope that we can support your work as well through that mechanism. And of course, the crisis response mechanism in, in Indonesia, uh, the CRM, which Ryan referred to a little bit, uh, maybe through that means there will be also possibilities to uh, to get funding to the community, which is so desperate in need. Uh, of these funds, given the current restrictions and, and, and issues that are happening. Um, any final words from you, Kantavina or Ryan, before we close this, uh, this interview? Any final words, Kanza? Um... Ya, saya berharap, berharap dari, dari, dari uh, pembicaraan ini, dari uh, apa namanya, obrolan ini, kita bisa bekerja sama untuk uh, semua orang-orang LGBTI khususnya teman-teman yang ada di Indonesia bagaimana memastikan bahwa ini menjadi menjadi selain menjadi perhatian komunitas juga jadi mendorong pemerintah untuk lebih uh, concern uh, bagaimana mendistribusikan uh, bantuan yang mereka uh, distribusikan itu bisa menyampai ke teman-teman komunitas dan juga memastikan uh, mungkin dalam konteks ini juga mungkin mumpung ini nanti akan dilihat oleh banyak orang jadi sekalian aku ngomong bahwa Kita mendorong pemerintah Indonesia untuk berhenti mengupayakan kriminalisasi kelompok LGBT melalui uh, pengesahan rapat undang-undang uh, uh, yang berpotensi mengkriminalisasi kita. Jadi tolong dalam konteks ini untuk lebih fokus dalam uh, pencegahan dan penanganan COVID dibanding melegalkan undang-undang yang halu. Oke, okay, we have pretty much the same final word. So I can uh, uh, make that one so yeah uh in this time of periods the solidarity of queer peoples around the globe is quite important and we can get strength uh by that so hopefully we can have a more so more strength solidarity to to help each other because you know we 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 have a lot of we we, we the, the LGBT people around the globe is impacted because vulnerabilities and how the government uh, and the criminalizations uh, impact also impact us. And Kanza add that uh, because of it will be everyone will be seeing that we also uh, push the Indonesian government to stop the criminalist. The, the effort of the criminalization of LGBT people in Indonesia, and especially in these time periods, because because yeah, they the government still decided to uh, run the meetings in the pandemics to talking about discriminatory law in Indonesia. So yeah, we hope that the government stay their focus to the to the how we can deal with this pandemics, not how to deal with the how to manage to ha to pass the criminalizations. I, I think, think that's oh yeah. I couldn't agree more. 
Um, yeah. Thank you so, so much. Terima kasih to both of you for this interview. Thank you. For all the work that you're doing. This was Paul Janssen for Avra TV. Uh, thank you again, my lovely guests, and good luck and lots of, of love and solidarity to the both of you there in Jakarta, Indonesia. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hola.